It's a three trillion dollar. Well, it keeps moving every time I say this. It's now three and a half trillion. But let's call it three trillion because it's easy math. Three trillion dollar asset. It goes to a hundred trillion, at least within ten years. That's just extrapolating out the trend rate of growth. So here's this big wealth generating machine, the fastest growing asset, the best performance of any asset in history. Keeps going. We get to a hundred trillion within ten years. So we're only three percent of the way there. Think of how much wealth this is going to generate for humanity. I'm saying $97 trillion. Let's assume you think, and probably rightly so, Rao's an utter moron, I'm going to halve it. That's still $50 trillion, which is 100 years of value accrual of the S&P 500. Real Vision founder and CEO Raul Pal believes the cryptocurrency market will grow from just above $3 trillion today to $100 trillion by 2030 more than double the 100-year value accrual of the S&P 500 in only two decades. Powell describes the cryptocurrency industry as the biggest opportunity available to all categories of investors in the history of modern finance, a complete restructuring of the finance industry, and the overall global economy. Powell believes 2030 will be a pivotal turning point for the global economy, ushering in what he calls the exponential age or economic singularity. He predicts a transformative era where high-tech innovations, particularly in robotics and artificial intelligence, will rapidly disrupt and redefine every facet of human life. Contrary to predictions of a total collapse of the global monetary system by sound money advocates, Pal argues that a new monetary phase is already being designed, allowing governments to buy more time and ensure a smooth transition. Pal's thesis centers on the idea that AI and robotics will fundamentally alter productivity dynamics. He highlights the world's worsening debt crisis, compounded by aging populations and declining productivity. In his view, traditional methods of economic growth are insufficient to address this challenge. However, he sees AI and robotics as revolutionary solutions. According to Pal, this technological transformation will fundamentally shift global economies without requiring a catastrophic collapse. Yet, he warns that by 2030, the world will be almost unrecognizable, rendering many current economic models and investment strategies obsolete. Pal emphasizes the urgency of leveraging opportunities in the cryptocurrency industry over the next six years to prepare for the seismic changes of the exponential age. The renowned analyst discusses his thesis and predictions in a recent interview with BlockWorks Macro. Before we dive into Raoul Pal's fascinating insights, please take a moment to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications. Your support helps us bring you more valuable content. Thank you, and enjoy the video. Well, I've said this, I think we've got six years to kind of A, unf*** our future, and B, before the economic singularity happens. Now, whether it's six years, eight years, five years, it doesn't matter. Directionally, we have a couple of business cycles left. Arguably, if it wasn't for COVID, we might not ever be able to have recessions. And I've thought about this a lot, and I'm starting to think that maybe recessions can't happen outside of exogenous events because of how we manage the credit cycle by debasing currency and making the, the collateral never go down too much so the so the the world falls apart by the time we start adding all of this technology in what the f I, I don't know what it means and so all i know is in 10 years time it'll not be you and me it'll be our ais you know we i've got an ai avatar on real vision right now that reads the daily news which is a video of me and by next week there will be a rel voice chatbot trained on my entire Twitter feed, all my YouTube, and a hundred books I've fed it. I haven't even put GMI into it yet. And in my voice, you can chat to me, ask me any question. You know, I have no understanding what this means because we will all have our own personal AIs. And who's running who at that point? How powerful is our AI? All of this stuff. So anyway, my simple idea is make as much money as you can for the next six years because then you, you can secure lifestyle. If you've got your house, you've you've met your Maslow's hierarchy of needs, it's a lot easier to deal with change. And the fourth churning says, you know, this change is going to be very difficult for society to deal with. So let's cover the, the hierarchy of needs first, and then we can feel secure in doing it. And that what leads you back again to this whole idea that crypto is the easiest way to unfuck your future, because it's the asset that 
actually makes up for all of the lost time that we've all had. Do we still need, you know, QE, yield curve control, all these liquidity positive dynamics to have assets do well? Yeah, it's got, it'll be gone. After two cycles, let's say, it's gone. Because, yes, the aging population gets worse, but it's offset by the technology. And really, the cowbell is because GDP is not growing fast enough because of the aging population. So let's say the trend rate of GDP is 1.75% of the US. If interest rates are higher than GDP, you're eating up all of the GDP growth to pay the interest, basically, at a very simple level. So we need a faster growth. But here's the hook, is who actually earns the money in that AI world? Because it's not you and I, it's who? It's the AI, the agents? Okay, well, how does that accrue? How are the governments going to tax them? Because they're going to have to tax them. If not, there's no government income. We have an entire new system we have to rebuild. And people haven't started to think. People have started to talk about it. Deep thinkers are thinking about it. But the political class has not got their head around this yet. So yes, we solve all of the debt issues. It goes away. And we've seen this once before. We saw it after World War II. It's a rerun of after World War II. World War II, as opposed to introducing AI and robots, we introduced the baby boomers, the largest cohort the world has ever seen. And by the time they got into their 20s, they created inflation because there was a bunch of them competing for assets. And by the time they got into their 30s and started saving, they created the largest asset boom the world has ever seen, the baby boomer industrial savings complex. Um, or retirement complex. And that has been the d- defining function. And what happened was the massive debts of World War II, they they had financial repression via yield curve control. We didn't have high inflation, but we just kept running financial repression. And then technology created a productivity miracle, and you added population, and it was all solved. And then we started it all over again because we're humans and we love debt more than anything else. While many sound money advocates predict recessions and sovereign debt crises, Raoul Paul takes a different approach, emphasizing central banks' ability to print money almost indefinitely as their most powerful tool. Since the 2008 Great Financial Crisis, apex banks like the Federal Reserve have relied on periodic money printing to stabilize economies and avoid widespread collapse. Pal argues this strategy has been a collective effort among central banks, and they will continue using it until a long-term solution becomes viable. Pal points to the rapid development of AI and robotics as the answer to global productivity challenges. As these technologies mature, he believes the era of periodic money printing is nearing its end. However, as the world undergoes drastic transformation, Pal stresses the urgency of seizing opportunities in the cryptocurrency industry before the economic and technological landscape becomes completely unfamiliar. Here are more clips from Raoul Pal's thought-provoking video. Crypto is actually fundamental to the future of the internet. So what we did is we, we concentrated power into the hands of Google, Apple, Microsoft, you know, a bunch of these people, Meta. And what happened is, and we concentrated the music industry, we concentrated a bunch of things in the hands of few. They got super rich and we didn't. We gave our information away for free because we were entertained. They were like entertaining the chimps at the zoo. And we were like, oh, this is amazing. I'll just give all of my data to you. And we've now realized that we've been robbed. So this layer of Web3 changes a lot. So it allows us to own our data, to authenticate what we want people to have. In a world of AI, we can prove we're humans. You know, we've been talking... On X, there's a bunch of people talking about KYC AML compliance, right? That really should just be a once-a-year thing with a zero-knowledge token, and I just pass it to every, every – and it just does it instantaneously. Well, we don't because it employs millions of f-ing accountants, administrative firms, and all of this stuff. It's madness. So all of this can change. Then, obviously, in a digital world, everything digitalized goes to zero in value or cost, almost – instantaneously we've seen it with everything but what blockchain does is create digital scarcity okay that's a profound topic which is why it's be able to create bitcoin but also it allows you to have smart contracts of any contract and all of this so it's the efficiency layer as the internet scales that we have to reorganize around what we call web3 now and it you know people think it's all to do with crypto prices token price nothing to do with that 
it's ju- it's just an internet for the future because we're living more and more digitally. You know, we have digital goods now, things we didn't have 20 years ago. Now, so this becomes very important, instantaneous contracts and everybody's around the world. I mean, 20 years ago, you and I couldn't do this. We would be on a phone with each other, right? It's just, it's it's happening so fast. So crypto is that, but it's also the efficient rails for the financial system, just at simple level. An equity that is uh, tokenized is instant, instantaneously settled, globally available. You know, if you think of the US wants people to access its capital markets, well, this is the way. Look at look at bloody stable coins. That's global, fractionalizable euro dollar market. You know, one of the largest markets the world's ever seen. This is now getting bigger because of this. So that's the the reworking of the financial system. But then there's another superpower within that that you and I are part of is the rejection of the institutions and trust in the institution of finance, the middlemen, the intermediary, the gatekeeper, and the complete explosion that started from Occupy Wall Street and then went warp factor 10, GameStop, the crypto stuff in 2020, and looks like it's going to go warp factor 10 squared this time around, is self-directed investing. Right, It's a big deal. And what we're doing is we're using the internet to organize hive mind, which is you get all of the voices coming together and then you somehow filter the noises to look for the signal. Now, that'll all happen with AI. It's, this is what we're doing at Real Vision, exactly this, is this is the mega trend and we're helping to make sense of the noise, you and I, and we're trying to deliver it back to people and say, listen, here's how I'm making sense of the noise. What do you think about that? That mega trend is the driver of the token price side. The token is really what we've got. If we think we got poor last time because of Facebook and Google, we now actually own the rails. It's the new internet. And guess what? It's tokenized. And guess what? It's a globally homogenous asset class that's fractionalizable and available to anybody on the planet. I mean, fuck me. This is the most powerful. We're giving a global utility and saying you can all share in it. And it's a race to buy as much as you can as early as you can. People don't get this. They all think no. crypto is a scam. They don't get that we're basically giving everybody a chance to own the entire rails of the future. Peter Schiff, a prominent economist and staunch gold advocate, has expressed grave concerns about Bitcoin and the U.S. economy following Bitcoin's unprecedented surge past $100,000. On social media platform X, Schiff warned that Bitcoin might inadvertently destabilize the dollar not by replacing it as a global reserve currency, but due to the US government's potential embrace of the cryptocurrency. He remarked, ironically, Bitcoin may end up destroying the dollar after all, not because it replaces the dollar as a global reserve currency, but because the US government embraces Bitcoin, prints trillions of dollars to buy it, and fuels a larger bubble that squanders the nation's wealth. Schiff has long criticized US fiscal policies, arguing that reckless spending and misallocated resources could deepen economic vulnerabilities. His criticism has intensified following President-elect Donald Trump's proposal to establish a strategic Bitcoin reserve, a move aimed at diversifying U.S. financial assets. This initiative aligns with Senator Cynthia Lummis's Bitcoin Act of 2024, which would mandate the Treasury to purchase 1 million Bitcoins over five years. Schiff has been vocal in his opposition warning that such policies could have disastrous consequences. He stated, If the U.S. creates a Bitcoin reserve, wasting billions of taxpayer dollars buying Bitcoin, it will also misdirect capital away from the very industries the U.S. must develop in order to grow the economy, reduce its trade imbalance, shrink fiscal deficits, and lower inflation. Schiff has always been anti-Bitcoin, a stance he has maintained since the leading cryptocurrency was less than $10,000 per coin. Today, one Bitcoin is over $100,000, and it's no surprise that the gold bug is still so strongly anti-Bitcoin. However, the world is moving on from the old ways and embracing the powerful digital transformation the cryptocurrency industry presents. Please share your thoughts on Raoul Powell's predictions and Peter Schiff's remarks about Bitcoin destabilizing the dollar. If you've enjoyed this content and want to see more, hit that like button. It really helps the channel grow and reach more amazing people like you. And don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell so you never miss an update. 
Your support means the world to us, and it keeps us motivated to bring you more exciting content. Let's grow this community together. Thank you for being part of the journey.